Welcome, Parish Collective family. We are entering into a conversation about the five signs of the parish movement. Many people are wondering, what does it look like to be a part of this parish movement? What are the things that we should be looking for as signs uh, for ourselves and for those that we come in contact with who say that they too believe in an incarnational neighborhood-based embodiment of the gospel? We're going to start today with our first sign which is Centering on Christ. And this has been written by Miss Christiana Rice and Reverend Jose Humphreys. It says, we seek to center our lives on Christ as a collective expression of the love of God in our place. In love, Jesus the Christ moved into the neighborhood and inhabited an obscure village called Nazareth. As an Afro-Asiatic, first century Palestinian Jew, he embedded his life in the sacred ordinary of his place, growing in wisdom and truth as he accompanied the displaced, dined with the disinherited, and taught his friends and followers how to look again at those invisibilized by society. Christ, through the Holy Spirit, invites us to be an extension of this heavenly love, an embodied presence to work for the repair, healing, and flourishing of all things inhabiting zip codes all over the globe, we seek to center our daily lives around the life and love of Christ, joining together with people and places through the transformative work of God's kingdom. This is the one sign that really makes us uniquely a part of the Christian movement. It really is about the church. There are beautiful people that we collaborate with, that we are in deep community with, that we work for the flourishing of our neighborhoods across faiths and perspectives and worldviews and stories. You could almost take that word centering and you could replace it with powered by Christ, fueled by Christ, grounded by Christ. Why do we care? Why do we care as people in community, in a place? Why do we care about the ultimate wholeness and flourishing and liberation of that place. Why do we care? In a sense, I think this sign points to that, the deepest why and what is our source. So our source of all, of our source of wisdom, our source of strength, our source of compulsion, our source of inspiration comes from Christ. And that is what we tried to communicate here. I, I think part of us adding this into the signs, when we look at what communities are doing well in this work, we are seeing that they are recentering, you know, redeclaring. We are we are fueled. We are centered. We are grounded in Christ because this idea of being the church in place actually is birthed of Christ. Yeah, well, thank you for that, Christiana. Here we're saying two things. If you want to just remember it as two E's: an embodiment and also ethnicity. And those are the things that God wrapped God's self in. Uh, that God took on human identity moved into an obscure village that says a, a lot about our faith think about this the fact that jesus's feet got tired and he sat down by a well with a, a, a samaritan woman we recognize that those movements are part of honoring not only deity but also humanity and humanity ironically is something that has often got left behind in in our faith talks jesus's body was filled with the holy spirit led by the Holy Spirit. The, the ultimate example, right? I love what Dr. Willie Jennings talks about, like is to be led by the Holy Spirit is to be led by that holy desire. And what is it? The ministry of the Holy Spirit, going back to basics, is to remind us of what Jesus said, but we forgot what Jesus did, who Jesus rolled with on the block. We forgot about how Jesus ate, Jesus walked, Jesus bled, Jesus was tired. So it's a powerful thing. And we, when we all come to church and center our lives and our bodies around Christ, this really has to do with bringing all of our identity, not just our class or, or race status, but it has to also do with countries of origin, many tongues, many tribes and nations coming into the same place to worship God through Christ and as reflections of Christ as well. Mm. So good, bro. So good. I love this invitation you guys give us in the sign this, that where it gives them a lot of responsibility to the church. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus did it in his embodied self and then left us as the body of Christ. So what does that mean? One of the things I was going to ask was like, 
we would present those three words centered on Christ or centering on Christ to any Christian faith community. And they would all say, of You're course. Right. Right, like right. of course we're cent that's centered point. on Christ, yeah. right? And what I think you just did for us though, Christiana, was bring out the unique nuance that we're bringing right. to what it means to be centered on Christ. It's not this existential, spiritual, oh, Jesus is the center of my joy type thing. Right. As much as it is, how does it affect my embodied reality in the world? Mm. You know, even you guys writing in here that like, Jesus dined with the disinherited, accompanied the displaced, and then taught his friends and followers how to look again at those invisibilized by society. I was like, that's a recentering in Christ, right? Like, you're right. We're going to be centered on Christ and we're going to be centered on the people Christ was centered on, the issues Christ was centered on, the places Christ was centered in. It's not this, like I said, once again, just spiritualizing of it. It, it really does put our feet on the ground and say, mm -hmm. show us your centeredness on Christ in the way that you interact in your neighborhoods. And, and, and if I could just add one quick thing, that oftentimes because of this Americanized version of Jesus, the language of personal relationship with Christ fits really well with that whole vernacular around capitalism, right? It's about me. It's about the things that I need to do, personal relationship with Jesus. And so to your point, yeah, we can put a few people in the room and ask, yeah, what is the gospel? What does it mean to be Christ-centered? And you get five different responses. I think something that's been really anchoring for me and is conversations we also have with the Parish Collective is just even around Howard Thurman's question and the Jesus and the disinherited. What does your religion of Christ have to say to those whose backs are against the wall. So when we think about embodiment, when we think about ethnicity, neighborhood, place, all the things that we've been describing here, it's just, yeah, I'm walking through neighborhoods, but mindfully in a different way as an extension of Christ with the concerns of Christ, seeing things, seeing the sacred, as was mentioned in the language in, of this, this first point, in a way that, that reflects Jesus and the kingdom. Glad you ended with that word because I really wanted us before we get into the practical talk, really hash out that language of kingdom that you use. Notice y'all, when I read it, I was trying to be clear that it says kingdom, not kingdom. Mm -hmm. okay. and so I really want you guys to flush out that thought and, and what you were doing in that last sentence where it just says, we want to be uh, the transformative work of God's kingdom. When I think about the word kingdom as well, I think it was in, in some of my readings around a womanist theology, mujerista theology, a theologian named Ada Maria Isasi Diaz. She used the language of the kingdom and, and she also described her grandmother's table. And when we think about what this kinship and being kindred in ministry and our approaches in a parish, uh, it allows us to see the kingdom in expansive ways, that, that people are brothers, sisters, potential brothers and sisters beyond just friends, and that we're all doing this in a way that serves uh, you know, the interests of the kingdom. So it's a, a catchment area, right? It's, it's a zip code. It, it's God's glory over this beautiful neighborhood of East Harlem. I'm just staring out the window right now. And we realize that, yeah, this is an extension of that. Mm -hmm. And we get to seek the, the flourishing of it. And I think that this word is also a, a word for, I know we don't like to use this word, uh, but for accountability that you know, sometimes kingdom sounds like monarchy, but when God works, uh, Christ works with us and the Holy Spirit invites us and we do this together. And there's something democratizing about that word as well. Oh, and even speaks to belonging, like identity, mm. you know, equality, unity. So good. So I just love for you guys to just give some practical ways in which you practice this thing or you've seen it practiced in your places. There are so many ways, but I would say if we begin with something like breath, so how are we mindful of our breath throughout our days? And when we are mindful, even in this moment, friends, Christ is with me, I am not alone. Even on this Zoom call, to not underestimate 
that those kinds of practices of engaging the presence of Christ in a given moment, we put in there the word sacred ordinary because it is very ordinary and it's very sacred. A simple practice like that and the many ways in which we engage, we may call them spiritual disciplines, we may call them spiritual practices, those actually do help us attend to the presence of God, the presence of Christ with us in this world. Yeah, and you made me take some breaths there. Yeah, right? Yeah, you know, we can go through our whole days on, with shallow breath, like mm -hmm. shallow breathing, and then you're, you're reminded God breathed into the first humans. Uh, I, I was thinking of the Lord's Prayer and even reading different versions of it that can disorient you. So like kingdom might be a little disorienting for folks, but if you read the, the New Zealand version of the Lord's Prayer, my goodness, where they talk about instead of kingdom, they use God's commonwealth of peace, I think it is. And they refer to mother and father of us all. So it becomes this inclusive kind of prayer, a prayer of belonging that gets us centered on Jesus, the kingdom, and also in our bodies. The other thing I was thinking about the embodiment, right, going back to some of that, praying with our feet. And Abraham Joshua Heschel, right, the late rabbi who also locked arms at Selma with Dr. King. He says he felt like he was praying with his feet. So those embodied actions, those local walks that we take to local businesses, everything that we do mindfully in the spirit of Christ can also be a, a spiritual practice. And then I would just finally say the right questions. When you think about centering on Christ, people often ask, like, what would Jesus do? Which is great. But uh, what about, what would Jesus ask? What would Jesus eat? What would Jesus see here? How would Jesus see? And when we are posturing our lives, through that filter of Christ in our bodies, it really will inform, if we're listening, it really will inform the kind of choices we make every day, the kind of things we fight for and cry over and laugh about. I thought another very practical example, we're in, in the midst of reading the First Nations translation of the New Testament. The, the name for Jesus is creator sets free walks on the earth and so if we have to reimagine and re rethink our theology and it very much is shaped by our places and by our stories and we're saying okay wait what would creator sets free do here so this is the practice it's being willing to read afresh and to re-examine and filtering all through the lens of christ we better re-examine our songs and the artists and who leads the way because what we sing about, what we create, what we, what we e express, it shapes us and it speaks to our neighbors about who God is. Those are <laughs> amazing. I love you guys making everything so concrete. I think one of my favorite things to talk about is how my understanding of worship was expanded through my centering of Christ in my community. So when I became a part of opening up the first grocery store in 50 years, all that, like going to the grocery store was an act of worship now. This was something I had to trust God for to be able to buy fresh fruit and vegetables and work with God on to make it happen. And I think centering on Christ in your everyday becomes an act of resistance, an act of resilience, and a representation of who Christ truly is. So I just appreciate you all with your, your language, the practical way that you brought us into what centering looks like, the beautiful way that you wrote this and reminded us to not only center ourselves spiritually, but center ourselves embodied and remembering our, our connection to our various ways of being. One other way I remember that you guys are talking as we close out is, the expansion of my language from brothers and sisters in Christ as we become more inclusive to siblings in the spirit, right? Like I've tried to use that language mm -hmm. more and more so that mm -hmm. no matter what ways people enter into it with their embodied lives, whether they find themselves in, in more traditional realms around sexuality and orientation or in a plethora, they are included in the body of Christ. So I appreciate you all. Y'all, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you again, Jose, Christiana, for your words, your thoughts. And uh, we got many more to come. So stay tuned as we continue to talk about the five signs of the parish movement. Till next time. Mm -hmm.